Um, okay, quickly, um, yeah. Bolaventa was a good example of what you see in this new Bolivarian model for higher education. You had a student, student welfare centre, or student development is the term they use, but it's sort of more probably what we would be familiar with as student welfare, where you've got um, a complete holistic healthcare centre on site on all of these um, higher education institutions on site, where you've got dental care, psychologists, counsellors, medical services, um, you know, you name it, you've got it, all free of course, and not only available to students but to the community as well, and it's a real, which, you know, is good from a service point of view, but, but more profoundly I think it's really fantastic for what that does in terms of the interaction between the community and, and the universities, the fact that people come onto the university for all manner of reasons and therefore interact with university life and whatever. Um, you know, I think I work out at the Melton campus a lot at VU, and I think our counselling service is down to 12 to 4 the last Wednesday of the month. So, you know, if you need some counselling services, you could just wait till the last Wednesday of the month, book ahead for a 12 to 4 appointment. Oh, it's a joke. It's a joke. Five minutes. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Wow. Um, I'm just going to have to cut a whole bunch of stuff out then. Um, we visited a Simoncito, which is a, a Bolivarian childcare centre, and you know, at the other end of the educational, um, uh, um, what's the word? Um, the other end of the edu educational experience. Uh, you know, this is this is another really inspiring aspect of the of the revolution. The way they've I've brought it out, although in their words, it's absolutely not enough, and there's a lot of very harsh self criticism about how slow it's been to expand the number of childcare places available, and expand the number of um, Bolivarian Simoncitos. But basically, um, whereas in 98, 99, for every 100 preschool aged children only, well, less than half were in any sort of educational experience, it's now 63% um, with more than a million kids between the age of six in Simoncitos. But as I said, there's a lot of real sort of self criticism, you know, harsh criticism about that. And there, there, there's, um, I, don't know exact, I don't know exact plans, but I know there was a lot of talk about a particular new building and new um, settings that were, that were being established um, to, to increase those figures. Um, I guess the most exciting thing um, from the, the, the early childhood education point of view is, you know, it's quite, a, it's quite a buzzword internationally, the question of 0 to 6 education. I mean, you've got UNESCO drawing on quite significant international data around, you know, it's not rocket science, is it? You know, if you give kids a good educational experience from 0 to 6, that sets them up really well for the rest of their lives. Um, and yet you look at Australia and you've still got this insane situation where people can pay, I think, my partner and I were paying like half of a wage to put our kid in childcare for two days a week. Um, you know, it's so inaccessible financially. There's not enough places for kinder. Kids continue to miss out on the, on the state-run kinder, which is just so inadequate. Um, and, you know, childcare workers are among the most exploited workforce in the country. Um, they get paid pittance and, um, you know, are just so devastatingly under-resourced. So to see what's going on in Venezuela, which is this slow but consistent and definitely forward-moving process to really expand massively um, childcare. I should say too, early childhood education was actually free in large part for a while pre-Chavez pre and pre-the revolutionary process, but um, it was extremely limited in access. So um, it was, it's an interesting anomaly actually. That's something to go into at another time. But yeah, um, so the, the key thing is to, 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 to create more buildings, more sites and more spaces and effectively train people um, to, to carry out that education. Um, I'll, I'll move on. We visited a, um, a school called Los Naranjos um, in the barrio of La Vega, which is um, a pretty interesting um, Caracas barrio. Um, it was a pretty amazing visit. The school sort of shut down on our behalf. We were, I think every kid in the school performed for us. We had all whole staff meetings. Um, it was really, it was really, um, you know, certainly I, I visited, I visited Cuba a couple of times and I, I spent some, some time there in 2002 and one thing that really impressed me about Cuba was its openness. Well, I can absolutely say the same thing for Venezuela. You know, at no point in time did a door shut in my face. In fact, quite the opposite. Everywhere I went, people said, it's so great to have you here. What do you want to know? What can I give you? When are you coming back and who are you bringing with you? Um, so a real openness, which was pretty exciting. Um, the thing about the schools, I suppose, is this Bolivarian education, you know, that they see themselves as at the start of this process. So it's absolutely a huge debate and it's wide open. What is Bolivarian education? The new national curriculum hasn't actually gone, it's been discussed, but it hasn't actually been adopted. So there's still, it's really wide open, the, the discussion about how this new Bolivarian education will look. But certainly the teachers spoke a lot about students being at the centre of a triangle, a school, community, family triangle, which, which for me rang rang very similar to, to my findings when I spent a, time doing, spent a lot of time doing research in Cuba. Um, but I suppose the thing about um, you know, revolutions and, and genuine social revolutions is that um, you know, it, there's no template. 
um, and, and, and really the thing that came through in schools more than, more than whether they, more than even, you know, whether they were doing the right thing or whether they'd got to this point or that point, more the exciting thing that we saw in, in terms of schools, and, and this could be said for the childcare centres as well and absolutely for the universities, is that thing about revolution and changing power relations. The fact that you had schools that were discussing and deciding the education process in Venezuela, that the decision-making power was firmly in the hands of teachers and parents and community members and, you know, um, and, and in some cases the kids themselves. And, and that really, you know, that's, that's the most interesting at this point and the most important character of this, this, this you know, starting point, um, education reform process.